But now we are going to the lesions that can affect the circuit which connects the uh, sixth nerve and the oculomotor nucleus and can affect a lateral gaze. Uh, so if you are not familiar with the functional anatomy of this circuit, I suggest you see the previous video first and then come to this video. Suppose there is a lesion that affects the abducens nerve nucleus of the right side. This is the midline. The right abducens nerve nucleus is affected by a lesion. What can happen? If the right abducens of nucleus is affected in a lesion, it will cause a right lateral gaze palsy because the right abducens nerve nucleus is actually a gaze center. As I mentioned, it contains the large motor neurons as well as the interneurons that will run through the MLF. So it will cause a gaze palsy. So if you have a lesion in the abducens nerve nucleus, it will cause complete paralysis of gaze to the right side. So a person cannot look to the right side. Attempted lateral gaze to the right side, it will not materialize. But the gaze to the left side is intact because the left abducens nucleus is intact. One thing I want to mention here is, suppose the lesion is not in the nucleus, but in the abducens nerve fascicles that are entering forward, then you only have a lateral rectus palsy of the right side and not a gaze palsy. A gaze palsy will occur only if the abducens nucleus is affected. So the typical difference in this can be found in a millard gobler syndrome where you have the abducens nerve fascicles involvement but the abducens nerve nucleus will be spared. In millard gobler syndrome, on a rightward gaze, the left eyeball will adduct but the right eyeball will not abduct due to lateral rectus palsy but the leftward gaze will be completely intact. Okay, This is a millard gobler syndrome where you have a pure lateral rectus palsy. But suppose you have a lesion of the abducens nerve nucleus classically in a Fauville syndrome. In a Fauville syndrome, when the abducens nerve nucleus is affected, you will have a right lateral gaze palsy because the abducens nerve nucleus is a gaze center. Now we are going to another lesion. This lesion is affecting only the right MLF. Understand that the right MLF is carrying the interneuronal fibers from the left abducens nucleus. So when the right MLF is affected, we'll, we'll think what can happen. The person will have an intact right lateral gaze because the right abducens nucleus is fine. It is interconnecting with the left oculomotor nucleus. Its innervation to the right lateral rectus is also fine. So the right and the left eyeball will cause a rightward gaze. But when the person attempts the leftward gaze, the left eyeball will abduct. That is intact because the left abducens nucleus is innervating the left lateral rectus. So this is fine, but the uh, yoking tract towards the oculomotor nucleus is affected. And that will cause an absence of adduction of the right eyeball. This is called an internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Example, the right MLF is affected. It will cause affliction of the adduction of the right eyeball. Since the right eyeball is not going for adduction, the left eyeball can have a nystagmus. The complete uh, mechanism is not clear, but it's probably a compensatory mechanism because this is not getting adducted. By definition, the right MLF lesion will cause a right INO. In a right INO, the right eyeball fails to go adducted. So the adduction of the right eyeball is affected in a right INO. Okay. Now we are going into more extensive lesion where the right MLF and the right abducens nerve nucleus is affected in a lesion. So what can happen? Always remember when the abducens nerve nucleus is affected in a lesion, it should cause a lateral gaze palsy. So when this extensive lesion affects the right abducens nucleus, it should cause a right gaze palsy. It also affects right MLF, so that will add the component of a right INO. So in that case, the person will have a complete loss of right word gaze. And that person, when he attempts the leftward gaze, the left eyeball will go for abduction, but the right eyeball will not go for adduction. So this is called a one and a half syndrome because one complete gaze is affected and half of the leftward gaze is affected. So that creates a fancy name, one and a half syndrome. Now, just for completion, I need to add two more structures to complete this lateral gaze circuit. One is the PPRF, parapontine reticular formation. Parapontine reticular formation is just close to the abducens nerve nucleus. Okay, So you have two abducens nerve nucleus in the lower pons. Just close to that, you have the PPRF. When the PPRF gets stimulated, it will stimulate the abducens nerve nucleus. So a lesion in the PPRF will cause the same effect as a lesion in the abducens nerve nucleus. 
Now the PPRF gets its influences from higher gaze centers. I will give you one gaze center which is clinically important. That is the frontal eye field. You have two frontal eye fields in the frontal cortices. Okay, in front of the precentral gyrus. Broadband area number 6 and a part of 8 will have the frontal eye fields which is going to influence the parapontate reticular formation. So imagine the left frontal eye field. The left frontal eye field will stimulate the right PPRF which will in turn stimulate the right abdescent nerve nucleus. So it's actually a chain. Okay. You imagine that you want to look to the right side. So the beginning of that process begins from the frontal eye field. The frontal eye field will stimulate the parapontine reticular formation. The parapontine reticular formation will in turn stimulate the abdescent nerve nucleus which will cause the gaze to the right side by the mechanism which I mentioned. Now we are going to think about what all lesions can affect the circuit and how it can affect gaze. Suppose you have an irritative focus of the frontal eye field. You think about a, a gliosis here, a scar here causing a seizure focus. So during a seizure, the eyes will tend to shift, drift towards the opposite side. Suppose there is a destructive lesion in the frontal eye field. The frontal eye field is destroyed. You don't get the input from the frontal eye field. So that will cause the eyes to have a less gaze preference towards the right side. So the eyes will tend to drift towards the left side because it is not getting the stimulation from the frontal eye field. One of my teachers used to say a mnemonic that is when this has an irritative focus, you, you have an excess stimulus from here, the eyes will tend to look to the opposite side, but no stimulus from that side, the eyes will look up why the stimulus is not coming. Okay. So this mnemonic is pretty useful to understand irritative and destructive foci in the uh, frontal eye field of the left side. Suppose you have a lesion in the right pons that is affecting the parapontine reticular formation or the abdescent nerve nucleus. It will cause a right lateral gaze palsy. Imagine about the lesions that can affect the MLF. The most common lesions are an infarct, a localized infarct over there or a multiple sclerosis plaque because I mentioned that MLF is a heavily myelinated tract. A localized MS plaque that is affecting the right MLF can cause a right INO in this case. So these are some common lesions that can affect and cause horizontal gaze manifestations. So this is the functional anatomy and the clinical anatomy of the gaze circuits that will mediate horizontal gaze. Thank you.